Traditional media is failing us. Our governments are failing us. And this is just one of the reasons why. Have you heard about Sasha Lee Shah's story? No? Well, listen up. This is also the first of 16 narratives I will be sharing in honor of 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. On the 30th of October, 2022, 25-year-old Sasha Lee Shah in a parking lot of Gateway Shopping Center had her life stolen from her by none other than her ex-boyfriend. Here's what happened. Sasha had previously been in a relationship with Kyle Indelar. They were both 25 years old. Kyle, who lived in Phoenix, was employed at SBV Services, a cash and transfer security company. Sasha, who had lived in Amschlange and then most recently prior to the incident Westfall, was working for Fidelity Services Group. She worked incredibly hard even after two corneal surgeries during her vast years, graduating with an honors degree in accounting from UNISA. The couple had dated on and off for around 12 years, with him being her first boyfriend. However, when she discovered his infidelity, amongst other things, she finally gathered the courage and ended things for good in June of 2022. Kyle, however, refused to let that be the end of things. He began to stalk her, sent her threatening messages, and even contacted her family members. What terrified Sasha the most, though, was that Kyle had access to a licensed firearm, and allegedly an unlicensed one too, with plenty of ammunition, thus making his threats on her life more viable. He was also known to have an obsession with guns and violence. He would park outside her family home for the duration of the weekend, message her over a hundred times a day, and call her from five or six different numbers. She even ended up speaking to his family to ask him to stop, but her concerns were were dismissed and she was told she was being stupid. Things declined to the point that Sasha applied for and was granted a protection order against Kyle in September. In this application she had written, I do not know what he's capable of as he has a firearm. My family and I feel very unsafe because he parks outside our house and I have no father to assist. He tried to contact me every day and just yesterday he kidnapped me and told me he will make a very big scene if he doesn't get to see me or if I get a new boyfriend. Kyle had already been served a protection order the previous year by another ex-partner so this was not his first experience of this process. He had also stalked this girl, he had pointed a gun at her, and he'd even attempted to murder her father. According to the order applied for by Sasha and the interim order granted by the magistrate, police were supposed to remove the firearm from his possession. This was not done, but unfortunately Sasha would only discover this weeks later. And so, oblivious to the growing danger, she moved on with her life, and a while later, she began dating a new partner. But for all of her progress, Kyle was still stuck in the past, clinging to an illusion, or rather delusion, of a relationship with her. And so the 30th of October 2022, a Sunday rolled around. Kyle was with family before suddenly leaving. Along his way to Sasha's home, he removed his number plates as the security on her side had been given his details. That day, Sasha had been with her family at home before leaving to pick up some items from Diskem and Gateway. When she left her home, she was unaware that Kyle was following her. At 6.40 p.m., she arrived at Gateway and as she parked in the underground parking lot and was sitting in her vehicle, Kyle approached her car, shot her point blank, ending her life. Before any anyone could do anything, he ended his own life with the same gun. A note was later found in his vehicle, claiming that an image of Sasha with her new boyfriend online had triggered him, and that no one could separate the two of them. He then offered some sort of apology for his actions. But you know what was shocking besides the tragic murder itself? The way in which it was reported, or rather not. One of the few media outlets that covered the story ended up almost sympathizing with the perpetrator, allowing him to appear to be also a victim in the situation. And although they faced backlash, particularly from an amazing ex-journalist Vanessa Tedder after that article which was subsequently removed the damage had been done and this is why South African narratives need to be told and shared by the public not just major media houses so please do join me again tomorrow for day two of 16 days of activism against gender-based violence please help me to ensure that these victims do not just become another nameless statistic